How's it going YouTube? Welcome back to another video on the channel and today we have my first place uh, locals branded Despia deck list. Like always we are doing those live most of the time. We're doing them on uh, our live streams every Wednesday and uh, chat is here with us supporting the deck profile. Um, this is my locals deck list. This is a new take I've been trying. I've been trying to kind of figure out how to get a little bit more consistency, maybe getting rid of some cards that I felt were redundant. Um, this is a 43 card main deck and uh, it has some interesting choices that I think were really good eventually uh, when it came down to the games. A quick recap of what I played against and you can see the rest of my matches like every local, you can see them on my Twitter so you can tune in over there. And I played game one against Flandries uh, it was a 2-1 game two. He basically feather stormed me and I kind of bricked. Um, game uh, round two was against Dragon Link. It was a 2-0, and it was really like Proskinian was the MVP of the whole day. Um, game round number three was against Dark World. It was kind of a back and forth, like you know, with gimmick puppet and like a full hand loop. They kind of FTK you, and you have to FTK them back, um, but. It was another 2-1. Game 3 actually called by the grave my gimmick puppet because it wasn't banished, which really sucked. But unfortunately, I had just enough to, to win like one second to time. He didn't have anything in hand that was like useful. I had to shotgun cross out because I had allure and cross out and ash. And I left another ash for the cross out. So I didn't want to draw into the second ash. So I just shotgunned the, uh, and I think he had like two ash in hand. So his, his hand wasn't really that good. Last round, Runic Sprite. Again, kind of back and forth, 2-1. Um, I think this tournament, I learned to scoop early in game twos. To leave enough time to game three, because you can grind, especially against decks like Runic, you can really, really grind. So Runic was kind of, it wasn't that hard to be honest. Dragoon, again, 43 card main deck. And we are going into it. So... We played three Aluber, and we played three Fallen of Albaz, and two Tragedy, one Ad Libitum. Can you guess why I played three Fallen of Albaz and two Tragedy? And you'd be right if you guessed that I did play three Allure of Darkness. I think this was the main um, draw power to the deck, and this is why I had to bump up my dark count and... Three Albas is actually really good anyway against things like Kostura because, you know, if you play only two and one of them gets banished off the top, it could also happen to the second one and you might lose the game just by not having Fallen Albas, which is essential. Two Tragedy, again, really good and consistent with things like um, Allure and, of course, things like Branded Opening. I really enjoyed the relatively high Dark Count of the deck. And with that, I also played two Mercurier because this is a really good banish as well off of Allure of Darkness. This gets you to Albion, to Cartesia, um, to another Albaz if you need it. And it was really good. Again, you draw these two, it's a really big plus. And then I played one Albion, one Cartesia. I think that the one Cartesia was enough. I didn't miss the second one. I know people are like debating between one and two. Um, just from that tournament's experience, it was relatively small, but I did not miss the Cartesia and Dark Magician for the Dragoon. I also played the one um, Serenir and the one Lubelion. I think these were absolutely fine. I did not miss more Bestials. I granted I did not see any branded players, but I um, it was definitely fine at two. You know, you can get the Lubel into the graveyard with Brand Fusion, and it makes it a lot easier. And for some going second cards, I played three Radian, the multi-dimensional Kaiju, and I played three Ash Blossom. And I think that this was the, you know, difference maker in terms of why I decided to build the deck like I did. And I think that I decided to... This is exceptionally strong against a lot of matchups so you put this in the main deck if you lose the die roll or if you go second this actually won me the game against dark world he had a goose on field and he was just controlling the game and eventually i drew it game one and this this basically single-handedly this kaiju on the Baguska won me the game 
And of course, why we choose to play the Dark Kaiju is because of Allure, because it's another good banish off of it. Allure, it doesn't plus you, but it ups the dark count of the deck, which is good when you're playing Allure and you want to be extra consistent. Three Brafu, three opening. Some games I cited one of these out. If you want to go for like a big going second engine, which you already have nine going second cards in your main deck, um, you can get rid of one opening because the deck is fairly consistent anyway and you don't have to end up on a luber every time. So cutting one of them uh, in siding is fine. Lost, branded in red, three fusion deployment. Every time you see this and like a way to Alubar, it's like super, super good. This is of course a key component in getting the gimmick puppet lock. And I think three deployment, one Albaz was fine. You can also surprise your opponent with like summoning Albaz uh, or Dark Magician for that matter. Um, some more consistency, Foolish, Gold Sark and Called by the Grave. And then I played three Super Poly, which is an insanely unfair card insanely unfair card this card is just insane so nine going second cards in the main and these two are are nice these two are real i really like them you can get to a lot of like different things with foolish and gold star gold star is mainly for um mercurier and tragedy obviously sometimes in games two and three i would side it out and keep in the foolish burial because it does a little bit more um to your consistency than the other cards 43 cards in the main, extra deck, one Lubelion. Again, people are gonna say like, you're playing against Kostya, they're gonna banish it. I don't really care if they banish it, to be honest. Even if they banish the Dragoon, even if they banish the Lubelion, there's a card in the extra deck they have to be much more afraid of if they're going for Diabloses, and it's actually Mud Dragon. So if I was the Kostya player, I would not touch any of these. It's not to say that Granted, every time they're not gonna banish the, your Lubelion, but I think it's fine because the extra deck is a bit, a bit, a bit tight right now. Uh, Rindbrum, I did not, I'm not sure I summoned it even once, but it is a very good disruption uh, on your opponent's turn if you want to summon the Fallen Valbas from your graveyard. I did play a Sprint, even though I didn't play Spring and Skit, this card is actually really good anyway. You can do the Rindbrum interaction, interaction with any special summon monster on your opponent's turn so it can be just like a you know an m pen which is usually not a valid target for fallen of albaz um not m pen it was a horrible horrible example a special summon monster so it could be like you know sprite red whatever you know things like that that are usually not like a, a fallen of albaz fusion material but it's a great interruption it pops an entire column i think it, it was fine um i think he summoned it once actually Guardian Chimera, absolutely insane. Uh, Masquerade and Despian Quertus. This was the MVP of the entire day. This won me two out of four of my games, like single-handedly. This is, uh, it gets over everything with uh, 3000 attack and it hits for a lot of damage. So if you attack it, if you attack an opponent's monster with 3000 attack with this card, you hit them for 32. And in a, in a tournament setting, this is really good. And then they basically have to deal with their own boss monster because you can get to summon them from the graveyard. So it's a super like powerhouse of a card. And I I might have missed Quiritus once throughout the tournament against Dragonlink, but this one outperformed. Like you put this on the board when your opponent is low on resources, you win the game and you can win in time as well because it's so big. Um, to Albion, to Mirror Jade. Uh, I think that's pretty standard. I wouldn't change any of that and then i played one um red eyes dark dragoon this card was really good against runic it wasn't necessarily that good i think i put it against flunderies as well but it's so easy to make and it's so good and i i absolutely had to i had to flex i'm sorry guys um Grangignol, i would say might be the best card in the deck this is an insane card um i would not want to play without it this is why i always want to play Cartesia because this card has so much value so you get to toss anything you want to the graveyard and of course some of the Quiritus which is invaluable sometimes um then Mud Dragon, Garura and Dragospelia. I didn't make Mud Dragon at all but I did make a Garura and it made a bit of a difference um 
when it came to like time and like how much damage you do because uh, if you don't know if it attacks directly double damage side deck is not a lot different than what you've seen up until now i think um three cross out which was good i mean it saved my ass so i feel fine playing it because i already have nine going second cards in my um main that i didn't feel like i have to like side in a lot going second anyway like evenly matched is fine um cosmic three cosmic against back row and three econ econ was like a last second decision it came um it came into play i think once in one game but i don't know i don't know if it's like amazing but it did come up once it was like really last second i was missing three cards and i decided to play that and then of course the horrible things uh gimmick puppet and db barrier i mean it sucks that this card is so broken and unfortunately yeah, we're gonna have to play it because if any deck has a win button then branded has a win button as well and if labyrinth can recycle the barrier against you i don't think it's horrible to gimmick puppet people <laughs> until it gets banned at least for that um so it was really really fun i went 4-0 it was a good practice with the deck i theorized a little bit you know with the dark count and the kaiju and i th i think it paid off it was it was fun um it's super consistent when you have this much draw power and when you banish the things that are important and that you want to banish you get so much value off of it that um it just makes it really worth it so i hope you enjoyed this leave a comment down below what you thought about this like deck list the side the kaijus in the main are you playing kaijus right now and if you do which one because this is a huge debate in the branded community leave a thumbs up subscribe if you are new as always and i'll see you in the next one peace